Christ we stand, every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Lord, we stand by grace in your presence. We're cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. We are your children called by your name humbly we bow when we pray release your power to work in us and through us till we are changed to be more like you then all the nations will see your glory To the Lamb, hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand, every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God, giving praise unto the Lamb of God, giving praise unto the Lamb. Let it be known who we are. Let it be said with all our hearts that we will live for Christ alone. And we will give our lives to let it be known. I know there are those who would silence the name share yet we see a need for its truth everywhere so with courage we'll answer with mercy and faith proclaiming the good news of Jesus today for that's what the world needs to hear again we must let it be known who we are let it be said Whatever he 
to do. Let it be known who we are. Let it be said with all our heart. Let it be known who we are. Let it be said with all our hearts that we will live for Christ alone. And we will give our lives to let it be Children in his arms 
tonight. You can be seated. Welcome to the house of God this evening. We're so grateful that you're here on our Sunday evening service and we're thankful for you this evening. I trust that you've had a good afternoon. Raise your hand if you got a good afternoon nap today. God bless you, okay? And uh, I'm so grateful for a wonderful service this morning. I, I, I believe with all of my heart this morning was just my favorite service since I've been here in seven years. It was just wonderful. I was so encouraged. The singing was just phenomenal. And, um, and I was just so encouraged and helped and, and blessed in my heart. And then uh, we had two um, uh, people, that uh, adults that uh, uh, made, uh, got, I'll get it out in just a minute. I want to get the right word here, that uh, uh, got the assurance of their salvation. They had both uh, one a man. I don't know, maybe in his 30s or 40s, and then one young lady, maybe in her 20s or 30s, uh, had made a profession early on as a child, but was really bothered by that, and so they got that settled. And they, and basically, when you, you know, when we talk about getting the assurance of your salvation, you're basically calling upon the Lord to save you, and just saying, Lord, I thought I got saved, you know, such and such when I was such and such years old, and but Lord. I, I'm, I feel like I'm not saved, and so I want to make sure I want to get this thing settled because it's not worth missing heaven for this. And so, Lord, I, I want you to save me right now. And so basically that's what they did, and so we're so very grateful for that. And I want you to pray for them, uh, that the Lord would help them uh, to grow spiritually in the days ahead. So uh, let's remember them. And just, just a wonderful, wonderful day, great attendance, great spirit, first-time visitors, just God's blessings in just every way. And that's just really what you have to say about it is it's just the Lord. And so we're grateful for that. And I'm telling you what, this choir, I'm telling you what, this morning was just, wasn't they great? God used them in a great way. And, uh, and then they're in choir practice. Man, they about had church during choir practice. It was great. I'm excited about this brand-new song they just learned. And I don't know when they're singing it, but it's going to be next Sunday morning. That sounds like a great time. And it's going to be great. So, uh, But we want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for His blessings tonight. And so let's pray. As I mentioned uh, this morning, let's pray for Sarah Bellamy. She'll be having surgery early on Tuesday morning. And I want you to really pray for her that everything would go well with that. And then uh, also Ricky and Ashley, we're so thankful uh, for uh, the newborn being here now. And uh, do, do you remember her name, sweetie? Huh? Emmett. Emmett June. Okay, what a pretty name. And so we're great, grateful for this young lady uh, just coming into the world. So pray for them and uh, that the Lord would continue to help them now as a family of four. And then, of course, Cooper, uh, remember him in prayer, if you will. And then all of our different prayer requests on the back of the bulletin, I want you to remember to pray for each one of these, okay? So if you're here tonight, you have a need or a prayer request, or you just want the Lord to help you tonight, would you raise your hand? So let's ask God for his blessings and his help in a great way this evening. Heavenly Father, we love you. We certainly want to give you all the glory and all the honor and the praise and thanksgiving, not only for who you are, but Lord, how you've blessed in so many ways. I remember not too long ago dreaming about a church in this type of setting, Father, with spiritual uh, aspect of things and just your blessings in so great in so such a great way and father we thank you and praise you for your blessings and what you've done and what you're doing and i want to thank you on credit for what i believe you're going to do in the future of this place and father i thank you for a place on sunday night a cold kind of a damp cold a rainy uh not necessarily cold but kind of a rainy uh, damp 
a Sunday evening and God's people being faithful and having a good spirit. Uh, you know, we don't we don't have this feeling that people have to feel like they have to be here. They want to be here, and I'm encouraged by their presence and their spirit already. Father, I pray that you bless each one of these hands that were raised, Father, about the needs, or you just simply uh, speaking to their heart. And Father, I pray tonight that you be with the needs of our church. Those some that, that we've already mentioned, many needs, Father, on the back of the bulletin and, and on our prayer list and. Father, I pray that you'd meet these needs specifically according to your will. And Father, we ask that you bless the service tonight in a wonderful way. Use the choir, the special music, the preaching of your word, and we'll thank you for what you do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. The choir's going to sing for us once again. I know you'll be blessed as you listen tonight.
I love this choir. Let's all stand together, all of the building tonight. We're going to sing out with the choir, with all of our hearts, this great song. God is so good. Raise your hand if God has been good to you. He has been so good to me. Let's sing it tonight together with all of our hearts. together the last two verses. as you come forward at this time, if you will, please. We want to receive our offering tonight, and I want to thank you for your faithfulness in your giving. Let's continue to be faithful, and uh, whether it's online or in the plate, in our giving tonight. And I want, again, I want to thank you for being faithful and generous in your giving unto the Lord. Let's continue to be faithful tonight. If you didn't get your tithing in uh, this morning, let's be sure to get that in tonight, and let's give unto the Lord. My pastor used to say, the tithe is not mine. The tithe is not yours. The tithe belongs to the Lord. And so let's give that to him uh, which, uh, which is due to him. Amen? So let's pray and ask the Lord for his blessings tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity uh, that we have to give. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with jobs. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to work. And Father, we thank you for homes to live in. We thank you for automobiles to drive. Father, we, we're spoiled in many ways. We thank you for food to eat. We thank you for clothes on our back. We thank you for just being so good to us. Many of us, myself very much included, not, we just don't have our needs met. We have our, our wants fulfilled in many ways, desires filled. And, Father, we thank you. God, you have been so good to us as we just sung. Help us to be faithful in our giving unto you as a way of worship, as a way of taking care of the property and, and uh, taking care of the, uh, the staff and the, uh, the needs around this place. And, Father, we'll thank you for what you do in and through each gift and giver tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. I 
stood in the courtroom the judge turned by way it looks like you're guilty now what do you say I spoke up your honor I have no defense but that's when mercy walked in and mercy walked in and pleaded my case called to the stand was God saving grace the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in I stood there and wondered how could this be that someone so guilty had just been set free my chains were broken I felt born again the moment that mercy walked in and mercy walked in and pleaded my case and called to the stand was God saving grace the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in thank you ladies very much I appreciate that tonight. Well, we have a couple announcements and our birthdays. I love recognizing our birthdays and uh, we have some things happening today. Brother Holly is your birthdays today and we want to say happy 52nd birthday to Brother Holly. Let's go ahead and give him a round of applause tonight. And uh, We appreciate Brother Holly and all that he does for us in the youth department and the music department and he is a blessing to me personally. And I uh, count him as a dear, dear friend. And uh, not just as a partner in the ministry, but a dear friend and a Christian brother in Christ. And I appreciate him so very much. And he is such a blessing, his whole family. And so happy birthday to Brother Holly. Then also Matt and Heather Mosteller. Happy anniversary to you guys today as well. And so we're grateful for you guys. You're not here tonight, so I can't ask you how many years. So, but happy anniversary to you. Chastity Falls, happy birthday to you this week on the 19th. So that'll be Tuesday. And so happy birthday to you, Chastity. Okay, and then also Bobby Adams. Happy birthday to you on the 20th. He was here this morning. And so please help with Bobby. We said happy birthday, Miss Dot. And then also Violet Honey, you have a birthday on the 21st of this week. So happy birthday to you. And this is a big one. This is the, this is the scary one for mom and dad. <laughs> this is the driver license one. This is the launching out one. 16. We're so happy. Uh, we're so happy. My wife is, I don't know if she's telling me what to say over there, but I heard something, so I just... <laughs> I, I, when my wife speaks, I'll be quiet. I just, what, you know. and, uh, but happy birthday, Violet, to you, uh, 16, this, this year. And then Melody, uh, happy birthday to you. Now, Melody, how old were you at, Melody? Okay, there you are. And how old are you going to be? 14. Happy birthday to you on the 23rd. Let's give all of these a hand tonight. All right, and then also uh, just a few announcements tonight. Uh, don't forget about a property advancement meeting this evening after the service. Uh, and we're just going to have it in here. I know it's kind of rainy and all of that. And so we'll just have it here over here by the organ. Uh, any, if you want to be a part of that, you're welcome to. If you're a member or not a member, you're welcome to be a part of this meeting. And I'm excited to, to let you know about some things that God has just set in our lap and uh, about the future of our church. And so we're so excited about that. And I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Don't leave. To, now, and, and I'm going to try... 
and I stress the word try. I'm going to try to, to, to not be as long tonight. I have intentionally planned this not to be as long tonight. So I'm going to try to wrap things up at 7 o'clock or so before, so even m several minutes earlier than what we normally get out, 7.15. So um, uh, to provide plenty of time for, for our meeting tonight. And uh, we've had these for quite a bit, these property advancement meetings. We've had several in the last year or so and uh, tried to give you information, but we've, God is just really bringing us up to a point where we need to just go ahead and vote on purchasing property adjacent to our church, and we want you to be informed about, about that. So don't, don't, don't leave and say, well, I'll just ask somebody how it went. No, don't do that, okay? I want you to be a part of that, so you're getting firsthand uh, information, okay? And if you're just going to vote on Sunday, October 1st, Sunday night, and just say, yeah, I'm going to vote for it because I want it, and Pastor, we trust you and the deacons and all of that, then that's fine. But uh, if you have any questions, any thoughts, you need to be a part of that, okay? And so keep that in mind tonight, if you will. And then also, Wednesday evening service, 7 o'clock this Wednesday, and we're looking forward to that. Teen program, Kids for Truth program, all happening Wednesday night. And then outreach, uh, don't forget about that. Um, and by the way, we'll be in our, our series in the, uh, not the book, but the life of Samson. And I want to encourage you to be a part of that, if you will, also, okay? Uh, but Wednesday night service, 7 o'clock. Also, uh, outreach and meal uh, will take place at 5 o'clock in the activity center, a meal for everyone that's going out. And we just got these brand new door hangers. I think I showed this to you last Sunday, but let me remind you of these. Um, we've got these brand new ones in. And again, I said it this morning, but again tonight, these outreach cards, they're kind of fall-themed. And uh, they're out in the entryway. I know several got some going out today uh, when they left today. But I want to encourage you to grab some, pass them out, really work hard for the Each One Reach One Sunday and just in general, okay? And so keep that in mind, if you will. We need a head count real quick so we can plan for the meal Wednesday night at 5 o'clock. So if you plan to come to the meal at 5 o'clock Wednesday, or raise your hand tonight. Brother Holly's going to count for us. Hold it there for just a minute and uh, so that Miss Kelly knows uh, what to prepare for that. Appreciate all the work that goes into the ministry here. It is unbelievable, and uh, just uh, so many people, it's hands-on, and I, I am just overwhelmed with gratitude, and uh, I want to recognize these guys that pressure washed. I know you guys don't want recognition, but uh, if you don't stand, I'm going to call you out, okay? I'm going I'm I'm to call your name. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that, but uh, if you were able, I know everybody wasn't able to come. I realize that, but if you were able to come and help pressure wash the campus yesterday, I want you to stand. And uh, these guys helped this property look so much better, and it was just this tremendous blessing. Let's give these guys a hand tonight. Uh -oh. and, uh, they only charged us $40 an hour. I thought it was a steal. And so God bless you guys. Joe Eskridge, you'll be sending your checks, okay? And uh, we appreciate all that you did, okay? And uh, uh, then also Wednesday night we'll be voting on a missionary, uh, uh, the McPikes to Scotland. And so keep that in mind, if you will. That was extended, and so we're excited about that. Uh, also, a few things coming up. Um, diaper drop-off for Jared and Brandy Miller. Uh, that is over here in the corner, and that uh, closes out today, ends today. Thank you for those who brought so many diapers and gift cards for all of these, these uh, newborns just in the last month or two. You, I know that you, I told my wife, I think today or yesterday, I said, our folks have been taxed with diapers here a lot recently, and you've been so gracious to continue to give, and I know that's expensive, and I want to thank you for that, and I know these young families are so appreciative of this, and so let's uh, be faithful or, or mindful of that. You can still bring it in Wednesday if you need to, if you forgot, but, uh, but that does end today as far as the bulletin and announcements and all of that. Ladies, Missionary Prayer Fellowship, this Tuesday at 7 o'clock. If you ladies are looking forward, to, looking to get into some type of ladies Bible study, ladies ministry, uh, this is it. It's the Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship. They meet in the Activity Center, and we have this on the calendar when they meet. Of course, we have it in the bulletin. My wife oversees this currently, and, uh, and uh, they'll do a Bible study, and uh, it's really good. I, I've got really good feedback on these ladies' meetings, and they, they minister. I think this, Wednesday, this Tuesday they're doing some, um, some, okay, it's tentative. Okay, so, um, but they're planning to do um, some, um, some uh, fabricated um, 
prayer squares, okay? Thank you for uh, letting me know the exact term there. The prayer squares uh, to give to folks and as a ministry. So they're just, it's more than just sitting around and drinking coffee and talking about the Bible. They do the devotions. They do have the meal. They do have a great time of fellowship, but they do minister and uh, in a great way. And so I want to encourage you to be a part of that, okay? And so we already have a lot of these things in plan. We have the ladies' uh, 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 quarterly meetings, but these are the uh, Ladies' Missionary Prayer Fellowship meetings, so keep that in mind if you will. Baby shower for Mariah Green is this Saturday, the 23rd, and we're so excited about this one. Stella Grace, I get the name right? And we're so excited for Stella getting here any moment. And uh, Owen, are you ready for a big sister? Little sister, oh my goodness, what did I do? Uh, we're so grateful for them, and, and uh, Casey and Mariah, they're blessing to our church. we got some of these wiggle worms that have just graduated from the wiggle worms, and they're in here and uh, on Sunday, uh, Sunday nights, and so we're grateful for these guys. And, um, but uh, do pro- be a part of that. Let's be really gracious to this family. And uh, from 2 to 4, floating baby shower, we appreciate Miss Scarlett Bennett heading these up. And, uh, and it's going to be a great time. So ladies, plan to make plan, plans to be here two to four. Uh, activity Center, uh, be a part and be a blessing to this uh, Mariah Green, okay? And then also revival. I know I've mentioned this so much, but um, I want you to be thinking about it at work. I want you to think about it when you're eating breakfast. I want you to think about it when you're doing the laundry, when you're mowing the yard. I want you to think about revival. And I want you to be praying about revival. I really do. I want it to be in your heart and your mind. And uh, let's, listen, if the devil can keep you from coming, he, he's going to do that. Because I believe we'll get some help. I, I really believe that. And I feel like if, if Satan can do something to try to detour you, deter you or whatever, uh, then he's going to do that. And so let's just make it a point by God's grace and his help. We're going to be here each night, Monday through Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Don't forget about the meals. They're going to be so good. And I don't know what Miss Kelly's got uh, and the, all the ladies involved in the meal ministry have. Do we have enough ladies for the meal ministry for the revival? Okay. And so we've got a lot of work, I know, to, that goes into that. And so they're preparing this. And usually there's 75 to 100 that comes to the meals. And I would encourage you to be a part of these. Great time of fellowship. Free food. Anytime between 6 and 645. And then getting in here at uh, by 7 o'clock. Okay. Let's get it early. When I have visitors. Choir will be singing to start us off each night. And so choir, please be in your place. Okay. And... Uh, Amen. Choir, please be in your place each night, okay? The Reigns family will be a blessing, and we're looking forward to Brother Philip Moore. Okay, so pray for their safety. Pray for your, the blessings of the Lord upon the revival meeting, okay? Men's golf tournament, uh, don't forget about that. Um, that will be Saturday, October 7th. We've got a great crowd of men already signed up. The sign-up sheet's in the entryway. Please see Caleb, Caleb Taylor if you have any questions about that. It'll be Saturday morning at Old Home Place. And again, uh, the deadline to sign up is next Sunday. Is that right, Caleb? Next Wednesday? Okay, so, so you need to sign up real soon, okay? And so keep that in mind, if you will. I'm looking forward to playing this year, and um, I just have a feeling I'm going to win that trophy. And uh, <laughs> Richard, we lost that one, didn't we? And, uh, but anyway, for the cornhole. But each one reach one Sunday. Now, don't forget about this. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this uh, because we talked about it a lot this morning. But I want to encourage you to find somebody and talk to them about coming with you, sitting with you on uh, Sunday morning, October 8th. And, of course, obviously invite them anytime, any service, of course. But specifically, use the, use the church sponsored or the church uh, <clears throat> Uh, to, to get, uh, use the church's uh, big day to help encourage them. So in, instead of just saying every week, hey, come be with me, hey, come be with me, hey, come be with me, say, hey, look, we're having each one reach one Sunday, and I want you to be the one that God uses me to reach. And so use that to reach others, and, uh, and so keep that in mind if you will. Now, yard sign, sign-up sheet, I haven't said a whole lot about this. This is a sign-up sheet you, we have in the entryway. If you would like a yard sign in your front yard that uh, can be a tool to invite people to church, uh, you can sign up in the entryway. Several have already done so. They're $8. You need to pay Miss Christy Holly. Um, and they're themed. Where did I put the door hanger here? They're themed just like this, okay? As a matter of fact, if you want to get, a, uh, get an outreach card, they look just like the outreach card with uh, the exception of the church website being on the bottom. And as a matter of fact, the sign sheet has the exact picture of the sign up sheet, the, the yard sign. It's the normal size, it's about that big, eight dollars, 
And uh, our church, a lot of times, will put these out quarterly, maybe two or three times a year for different big events, and uh, or just different times a year. And um, and you've probably seen them out. And we get about 20 or so, and we want to add to the order if you want to put one in your yard. And so if you want to invite your neighbors and so forth, maybe you have a neighbor that you want to invite or you want somebody to let, let them know, hey, uh, I attend Temple Baptist Church and I want to invite you, but you just, you, you're constantly missing your neighbors and you just don't have that opportunity, stick a yard sign in your, in your, in your yard and it'll be a great way to invite them. And so keep that in mind if you will, okay? And then one other thing, Young at Heart Fellowship will be coming up in the 1st of October. There's a sign-up sheet out there and for that, and this is for ages 66 and above, so keep that in mind, if you will, please. Okay, take your Bibles tonight, please, and I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians tonight, in chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16, again, thank you for being faithful to the house of the Lord. It's so good to see each one tonight, and we're grateful for your presence tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. And uh, we'll have another song right after the reading tonight. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 16. And look with me please in verse number 1. When you found your place, would you say amen? amen? The Bible says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store... As God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. Verse 4. And if I be, and excuse me, and if it be me that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that she may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Now verse number 9 is what I want you to notice. Verse number 9, the Bible says, For a great door and effectual is opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Now I want you to turn over just one or two pages to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. In his second letter, Paul writes the second time this kind of the same phrase to these believers in the city of Corinth and the church there. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, just one verse here in verse number 12. He writes again, he says, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. And I want to talk to you for just a few moments tonight on the open door. And we'll get in right to this after the song and prayer tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your blessings today. I think every one of us could leave right now and say it's been such a wonderful, wonderful day to be with God's people and Lord, your people and, and to just have our hearts filled spiritually. And Father, we need that. We live in such a crazy world. We need spiritual gasoline. We need strength for the journey. We need the fellowship of the saints. We need the preaching and teaching and the exhortation of the Word of God. And I pray tonight that there would be no exception from this morning, that we would be attentive of the Word of God, that you would give me clarity of mind, that you would use me, Father, for just a few moments to be a blessing to our people. And I pray that you would help us to realize the open doors of opportunity that lay before us. And Father, help us to take hold upon that. Help us to be eager to walk through those doors of opportunity. We love you tonight. Bless the song now and the preaching of the Word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Some glorious morning sorrows will cease. Some glorious morning all will be peace. Heartaches all ended, school days all done, heaven will open, Jesus will come. Some golden day break, Jesus will come. Some golden day break, battles all won. He'll shout the victory, break through the blue. 
some golden day break for me for you sad hearts will gladden all is made right goodbye forever to earth's dark night changed in a moment like him to be oh what a day break that morn will be oh what a meeting there in the skies no tears no crying shall dim our eyes loved ones united eternally oh what a day break that morn will be some golden day break <clears throat> jesus will come some golden day break battles all won he'll shout the victory break through the blue some golden day break for me for you Thank you, Brother Holly. I have not heard that song in a long time, and very, very good. I enjoyed that this evening. So in these two passages that we just read, the Apostle Paul is speaking, of course, to these believers in the city of Corinth, and we've brought out two specific, um, uh, or, the, or one specific topic uh, that Paul speaks on in both of his letters. In the first letter, 1 Corinthians, also the second letter, 2 Corinthians, regarding this topic of an open door that God had opened for him. And of course the open door that Paul is speaking of is a way to illustrate the opportunity and liberty he had in certain areas to preach the gospel. In some places, and I know most of us will understand this, that some places that Paul went on his missionary journey as a missionary, there was closed doors to the Word of God. They did not want anything to do with the Word of God. They did not want anything to do with the Bible. They did not want anything to do with the name of Jesus. They did not want to hear about salvation. They wanted to stay in worshiping their idols, and they had everything... Um, planned out in their, in their life as far as religion, and they didn't want anything to do with that. They heard of the persecution, perhaps, of Christians that have already started, and they didn't want anything to do with that. And so Paul, when he would go, and, and we learned that Paul would go from house to house, and perhaps as he would knock on a door, uh, he would have a door shut in his face, if you will, because they said, no, thank you. I do not want anything uh, to do with the name of Jesus. And so Paul had a lot of closed doors in his ministry of people that was not interested and so on and so forth. But when Paul found an open door, when Paul found an opportunity of people that were eager to hear the gospel, that were, able to, that were eager and hungry to hear the word of God, uh, Paul rejoiced in that. And he said, I found an open door and pray for us that God will use us in a great way. And uh, I think about the church of Berea that, that, uh, that searched the scriptures daily uh, so that, uh, that to, to make sure that Paul, what he was preaching, that that lined up with what the Bible said. We all ought to do that. Jesus talked about being hunger and thirsty for righteousness. And, and uh, Paul, again, was looking and searching for open doors of opportunity so that he might preach the gospel and people's hearts would be open to the gospel, that people's hearts would be open to Christianity, that people's hearts and minds would be open to the gospel and not closed. Is everybody with me? And so as believers today, we would do well to look for open doors of opportunity, just like the Apostle Paul. And I want to say, of course, that the land, we're so excited, of, and of course we haven't, we've, we've been, We've tried to be very, um, very discreet uh, with how much information we, we put across uh, because from the pulpit because of our services being live streamed. We do live stream our services. We have a lot of folks that watch a lot of our services. Matter of fact, Richard and Jeslin, who just joined this morning, were watching our service 
uh, for a long time, maybe a year or two, I think, I think they mentioned, before they ever came for the first time. And we're so grateful that they came in, they said, we know so-and-so, we know so-and-so, and we know all about this. And matter of fact, Brother Holly told me, Jeslyn, I don't know, I know if you guys have made this connection, but uh, uh, Jeslyn had, uh, I think we're in King or something, and uh, Brother Holly told me one day, probably about a year ago, he said, I met this lady from Louisville today. And he sa- I said, in Louisville? He said, no, it's King. And he said, she came up to me, she said, you're Brother Holly from Temple Baptist Church in Louisville. He's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> and so, praise the Lord for that service. But we want to be a little bit discreet about that, and so that's why, of course, we have the meeting there. But, um, but God is so blessed in opening a door for us on this property situation, and I am so grateful for that. Now I want you to notice four things, and in, in, in relation to that, just four things about open doors that uh, specifically that Paul is dealing with here and um, in our text tonight. Notice number one, and again, I'm not planning to be long at all. Number one, I want you to notice the optimism for the open door. Now, I don't know where you're at, but... You're not too far from either one of our texts. So 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 9, notice that again. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse number 9, notice what Paul said in the first letter to the believers in Corinth. He said, for a great door, notice the word great, circle it, underscore it. For a great door, and here's the next word to underscore circle, effectual, powerful. For a great door and effectual is open unto me. Paul was optimistic and always looking for an open door. And can I say that may we, in a broad sense for application tonight, may we be optimistic and always be looking for an open door of opportunity to, to, to uh, further the gospel ministry, to further uh, our, uh, the ability to reach people with the gospel in any and every way that we can. I, I want to always be looking for an open door. When I go to the grocery store, I want to be optimistic that God would open up a door uh, that I could maybe share an outreach card with somebody. I may not can share the gospel with somebody. I'd take 15 minutes for, with an employee or something like that. But I want to look for opportunities. And by the way, I believe if we look for an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody, I believe God will present those opportunities as we are searching for them. And may we be optimistic, may we be optimistic on, on each one, reach one Sunday about opportunities that God might open doors for us, opportunities to reach people. I think about a great opportunity we have is this coming Wednesday when we vote upon a missionary to add to, uh, Lord willing, add to uh, all the other missionaries that we have and trying to support to get, uh, the, some are on their way to the mission field, some are already on the mission field and serving and, and so on and so forth. What an open door of opportunity to now be a small part for you and I, a small part of a great ministry potential in the, in the area of Scotland. What a great opportunity. What an open door for us to jump on that and say, hey, I want to be a part uh, of this open door that God has allowed. You know, some countries and some areas that missionaries go to, they have very much closed doors. Raise your hand if you've ever heard, and most of you I know have, of the underground churches that are all around the world that are in closed countries or communistic countries. Listen, we are so blessed in America that we still have, and I understand it's not perfect, never has been, never will be. Uh, it's made of per- people that are never perfect, never will be. But I thank God for still we have the opportunity to open up the Word of God and preach in a public manner. Amen? Amen. There are some missionaries that are sacrificing, putting their life on edge so that they might go to a a country and uh, they cannot publicly announce, they cannot put the church maybe on the street corner per se. They have to go in as a school teacher or whatever, uh, another occupation and kind of go in a cognito, if you will, go in and disguise, if you will, and, uh, and present the gospel in that way because it's a closed country. There's closed doors. And thank God for the open doors he's blessed us with in America. But for you and I, again today, in the life and in the, in the time frame in which we're living in, I believe God still opens doors for us. And may we look for those opt- open doors and be optimistic about that. Have some hope that God can open door for me to witness to my neighbor. God can open a door. God can give me opportunity. Can I share something with you personally? That's fine. I'll do it anyway. <laughs> my wife... <clears throat> 
I don't know if she wants me to say this or not, but I'm going to. My wife, she, she said the other night, she said, she said uh, I'm going to invite some of my neighbors. I don't tell you which one neighbor it is. We live in a subdivision and so forth. She said, I'm going to invite some of our neighbors to church for each one reach one Sunday. And so she began praying for an opportunity to invite them because we're busy. They're busy. It's not like every day that we, you know, talk across the fence. We just don't do it. I'm just, it seems like we're just racing <laughs> literally sometimes, literally, literally sometimes I'll pull in with my truck in the driveway. I'll call my wife ahead and I'll say, get in the van, have the kids in the van, have it running. And I'll jump out of my truck and into the van, literally. And uh, sometimes life is like that. Not always, that's not every day. Some of you are like, yeah, that's not the life normally. But sometimes, and sometimes life is really busy. And, um, and, uh, but she said, you know what, I'm going to pray that God would give me an opportunity. Guess what happened? God answers her prayers. I mean, just unbelievable. If you want somebody to pray for you, ask my wife. I mean, I'll pray for you, but it's like the Lord, my wife says, dear Lord. And it's like the Lord says, yes, Hannah. It's like, I mean... And I, 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 you know, you, you know what I'm saying, what I'm saying, I'm not saying, it, it, it is incredible. And uh, so, uh, guess who knocked on our door yesterday or the day before? Our neighbor. The Lord brought the opportunity to her doorstep. She didn't have to leave the dual house. She's like, Lord, please give me an opportunity to invite my neighbors to each one reach one Sunday. And here they ring in the doorbell to bring us some vegetables from their garden. And I'm like, why? You know, listen, you know, I think God presented that opportunity because my wife prayed for it and she asked for it and she was looking for an opportunity and she did indeed invite them. And so let's have some optimism for an open door. Number two, notice the occasion for the open door. In verse number 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 12. Uh, I know we're turning back and forth, but I'm using both verses as the topic here. And uh, look in uh, verse number 12 of chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians. Paul says, furthermore, when I came to Troas to do what? To preach Christ's gospel. And the door was opened to me of the Lord. So the occasion for Paul's desired open door was simply to preach the gospel. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 1, the Bible says, Finally, brethren, pray for us. Paul is, again, writing to the believers in Thessalonica. And he says, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course, there it is again, liberty, an open door to go through in hearts and be glorified even as it is with you. Paul says, pray that as we're preaching the word of God, as we're witnessing to people one-on-one, as we're preaching on the street corner, as we're working at giving out the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, that people would be open to that. Raise your hand if you remember the parable that Jesus gave of the soul. And when the word of God is sown like a seed into the soul and the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, that seed is going to land sometimes on hard soul, packed soul. Sometimes it's going to land on stony soul. That soul is going to be have rocks all in it. Some of that soul is going to be thorny. The thorns are going to grow up in the weeds and it's going to choke that seed out before it be, be, uh, gives any fruit. But some of that seed, some of that word of God is going to fall on some fertile, some soft, some rich soul. And that's the way our hearts ought to be always for the word of God. It's not cold and hard to the word of God and the work of God, but soft and tender and humble and receptive and eager for the word of God to have free course in our life. Amen? But then also pray that when we... Uh, have opportunity and open doors to witness to people that the word of God that we give out would fall also on soft, fertile soil that there would bring forth fruit. Now, I don't know when I give somebody an outreach card, when I invite somebody to church, when I present the gospel and I try to help and some, encourage somebody, I don't know who's going to receive that and who's not. And so God doesn't tell us to be a soul sampler. God just simply tells us to be a seed thrower. Amen. And God says, I just want you to give out the word of God to anybody and everybody because that's who I died for. And I just want you to be a seed thrower. Don't be a soul sampler. Don't constantly try to evaluate everybody's heart, everybody's response, and everybody's action. You just throw out the seed and God will take care of the rest. Amen? So the optimism for the open doors. Man, let's be like Paul. Let's look for a great and effectual open door. Let's look for ways in which we can further the ministry of Temple Baptist Church. 
I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to ever be content. You know, I, and there's, there's different types of contentment. It, you know, Bible talks about godliness with great contentment. There's great gain. And I want to be content with where God has me, where God has placed me. But I always also think about what Paul, we said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Paul was never content with saying, well, I've reached enough people with the gospel. He was always having somewhere else on his mind. He was trying to get to Spain before Nero beheaded him. And he continually wanted to go preach to the gospel to the next place, to the next person. And may we never be content with just where we are. May we always be looking for looking for open doors. Be optimistic about that. And again, the occasion, uh, again, uh, is, is to get out the gospel of Jesus Christ. The idea of open doors and the opportunity to, uh, to purchase land and to, uh, for hopefully one day in several years to come, is to hopefully build another auditorium and allow this to come into back to a beautiful gymnasium, is not necessarily uh, for, our, for people of Louisville and surrounding communities and area to say, wow, look at that place. But to, for people to say, wow, what a God. And there's a place I might can go to get some spiritual help. Notice number three, the operator for the open door. Michael Cincinnati, I just thought about you. Your name just went across my mind. The operator for the open door. Everybody knows Michael. He closes the door, and every, I mean opens the door for everybody. And I appreciate his blessing, his ministry in a great way. I'll never forget the day when Michael came to me. And uh, several years ago, I don't know, probably six or seven years ago, right after we first came, and uh, Brother Michael, I was, I was, nobody was operating the door. It wasn't that uh, nobody wanted to. It was just, I thought, man, what a great way to have an open door when you walk up the steps of the uh, auditorium that somebody would greet you with a smile and uh, say, hey, how you doing? It's good to see you. And open the door for you. What a blessing. That would be a, for a first impression. By the way, first impressions are so important. By the way, when people come in, each one reach one Sunday, leave your seat. Go to visitors. Shake their hand. Tell them your name. Welcome them. You do that, but I want to encourage you to continue on. And um, you say, I don't know them. That's the point, <laughs> to get to know them. Introduce yourself. And uh, you'll never know how God can use you. And to just introduce yourself. Anyway, and I was thinking, Lord, would you please give us somebody to operate the door? I would love to do that, but I've, I've kind of got so other things going on, you know. And uh, Lord, would you do this? And th- I think it may have been like the, a few days later. Brother Michael came to me and he said, Pastor, he said, would it be all right if I would open the door for people on Sunday? And he'd been doing that ever since. And now we get to the point now that when he's not there, which is very seldom, but when he's not there, people are like, where's Michael? Where's Michael? Where's Michael? (laughs) What a blessing. But number three, the operator for the open door. Now, are you in 2 Corinthians? Are you in chapter 2? Are you in verse number 12? If you're awake, would you say amen? amen? That'll do. Verse number 12. It says, furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel and a door was opened to me, can you say the next three words with me? Ready? Begin. Of the Lord. The operator for the open door. Paul knew it was the Lord who had opened the doors of opportunity for him to further the gospel ministry. It was God who was opening the hearts and it was God who was opening people to be receptive of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was God who was opening hearts of people to say, hey, listen, Paul, let's start a church here. God's doing a work. God saved 10 or 12 of us. Let's start a church so we can be a, 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 a good a, a, a place in this community where people can uh, come and know about the Lord and hear about the Lord to be saved. And, and so God, Paul realized it was not him opening the door, it was God opening the door of opportunity. And may we understand tonight that it is the Lord who opens doors of opportunity. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse number 7, the Bible says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. And by the way, you know that there's seven churches of Revelation. And out of all of those, there was only really one church that God put his stamp of approval on. All the other churches, God said, I appreciate this and this and this that you're doing, but a lot of these things you need to straighten out. But the church of Philadelphia really had the stamp of approval of the Lord. And he says, unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things saith he that is holy. Well, I only know one that's holy. That is he that is true. He that hath the key of David. And it goes on to say, he that openeth 
and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. He goes on to the church of Philadelphia in verse 8, and he said, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. God said to the church of Philadelphia, you don't have a lot of ability, you don't have a lot of strength, so I'm going to open doors for you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to help you because you're, you're sticking with the stuff. You keep on keeping on. You're being steadfast, immovable. You're always abounding in the work of the Lord. And you can't do a whole lot, but I'm going to open some doors for you. I'm going to open some hearts for you. I'm going to open some opportunities for you to further the ministry there in Philadelphia. And God says, when I open a door, nobody can close it. When I close a door, nobody can open it. And that's what we are to look for in the ministry and in our lives as Christians of the Lord Jesus Christ, is we look for doors that God has opened. You understand that we cannot open doors. I cannot save anybody. I cannot go into into your heart and pry open your heart and say, get saved. Mm. I cannot go to somebody's heart and say, get right with the Lord. I cannot do that. But God can work in people's hearts. It is not Pastor Bowles that causes people to go to the altar. It is because you have an open heart to the Lord. And you say, Lord, I want to be used of you. Lord, you spoke to my heart about this and I want to respond in this manner. I want to respond in this way. It is because you have open hearts to that. And it is of the Lord. And can I say now more than ever, we need to pray and ask God to open doors of opportunity. Man, for our each one reach one Sunday, we can ask and ask and ask and ask. We can put out door hangers and door hangers after door hangers. We just ordered a whole bunch of 2,500, another box of 2,500 door hangers because we gave out so many already this year. Uh, Listen, uh, you can give out outreach cards, you can invite people, but it is God who has to work behind the scenes and open the heart's door and give you open opportunities. And so we are to partner together. Raise your hand if you remember the text. We are laborers together with God. See, I'm not in this thing by myself. I'm working, but God is behind the scenes opening the doors. Amen? And may we pray for those. May we seek open doors for the Lord. And can we walk through those open doors that God... Listen, I don't want to ever be guilty as a child of God that if God opens a door, that I would not be willing to walk through it. If God opens a door for me, for ministry, to witness, or whatever that may be, I want to say, Lord, if you've opened this door, I want to walk through it. I want to be obedient to the opportunity that you've given me. The operator. Now, no, notice the last thing, and that's number four, the opposition for the open door. Now, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 9. Paul said to them in the first letter, For a great door, in verse number 9 of chapter 16 of 1 Corinthians, For a great door is open Excuse me, for a great door and effectual is open to me, and there are many adversaries. Did you realize that when Paul had the greatest opportunities, when Paul had the open door, there would be a lot of adversity, there would be a lot of adversaries, there would be a lot of oppression, there would be a lot of satanic attacks. Paul said in some reference that Satan had hindered him in his gospel and his missionary team. Why? Because open doors. When the Satan sees God doing a work, he's always going to try to hinder that. And I'm not speaking of our church in any way. I thank God for what he's doing here and the sweet spirit and the wonderful works of God and the, and the tender and receptive heart and the hunger for trying to go forward in the ministry in so many regards. But I promise you this, when you look for opportunities to do business with the Lord, to do, do great things for the God, when you seek out to try to invite people to each one reach one Sunday, don't be surprised when you face some tribulation. Don't be, don't be surprised when, when you face this heartache and this issue and this problem and this and a flat tire and this and this and this issue and this conflict and, and this and your family and this and so forth. Don't ever be surprised because Satan will not stand back and watch a church like this and watch people get the assurance of their salvation and see people join a church that's trying to reach the community and the area and really the world through missions with the gospel. He's not going to sit back. He's not going to sit back with Christ honoring music like this right here and just sit back in his beach chair and say, God bless you. He's not going to do that. We've got adversaries, and we need to be aware of that. Amen? Now, I close with this. 
Are you looking for open doors for the, with the, for the ministry of the, the gospel? Are you looking for opportunities that God can use you to witness to somebody? Are you looking for opportunities that God can use you? I want to say this, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm just going to tell you. A lot of times when you have opportunities, there comes a cost with it. We have a great opportunity for this land. You know where I'm going with it. There's a big cost. Big cost. We have open doors, but of property and all of that. What a blessing. But there's a cost to it. We've got to be willing to give, to sacrifice, as you already have the last several years. And are we looking for open doors from the Lord, and are we willing to walk through those doors that God opens? If God opens the door, are we going to say, yeah, I want to be willing to walk through that door? And, and again, with the property, man, God is opening doors. And I'm going to share that with you in just a second. To God be the glory. But we have to make that choice to walk through those doors. To say, Lord, we prayed, we've looked, we've searched for open doors from you. Lord, you're opening. Lord, give us the courage. Lord, give us the strength. Lord, give us the wisdom, the grace to walk through those doors. And I believe when we do that, we take that step of faith. By the way, God blesses faith, doesn't he? And when we take those steps of faith, God continues to bless. God continues to bless. And then as you take those steps of opportunity of open doors, then God opens more doors. And then through that, God opens more doors and more doors of opportunity to reach people with the gospel. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. <clears throat> heads bowed and eyes are closed. All over the building tonight. Our musicians are coming and playing the invitation. We never want to close a service without doing business with the Lord, without responding to uh, how perhaps and hopefully the Lord has worked in our heart. If you're here tonight and not saved, tonight would be a wonderful night to trust Christ as your Savior. If you're here tonight and you have a need, maybe you, you have a, some issues in your life or whatever that may be, would you come and seek the Lord for some strength and some help with that? As our instrumentalists begin to play, and as we stand together with heads bowed and eyes are closed all over the building tonight, the altar's open. Maybe you want to come to the altar and say, Lord, in hearing that message, you spoke to my heart, and Lord, help me to look for opportunities to, to share the gospel. Lord, use me to walk through those doors that you opened. As Brother Holly sings this verse, the invitation's here, would you come tonight? Think about the words as Brother Holly sings them for us tonight. Think about it this evening. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go. Verse all together. Put this way. Let's get all with God. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him, with him. Father, help us to look for open doors of opportunity. Help us to seek those doors and realize you have to open the doors of opportunity, but help us to walk through those doors that you open with faith and courage and excitement and trust in you. 
Father, I pray that you would, again, bless, use us as a church family. Thank you for your blessings already upon this place. Please continue to bless in every way. We love you tonight. Give us a great rest of the evening together in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here tonight. It's been a wonderful day. I love being at this place. And uh, so good to see you. And thank you for being here. Now, we'll be, we're going to have our property advancement meeting. And, but we're going to dismiss, and I'm sure there's others, uh, fo folks, many that uh, want to go ahead and head out and so forth. And so we're, we'll be dismissed. In about five minutes, we'll gather over here at the Oregon side and have our property advancement meeting. But if you need to go, you go ahead. God bless you. You're dismissed. Turn around, smile, shake about three or four hands, welcome others tonight. Thank you for being with us.